So, like I said, there's three pillars that programming stands on. One are uh, conditionals, the other are methods, and the other are loops. And typically with loops, you're also talking about working with data, and data are the arrays, okay? And, and many things are always put into arrays, and programs work very well with arrays. So we're looking today at uh, loops and arrays. This, these are the MIT lecture slides that we're using today. And uh, he's going to talk about the previous assignment. I'm, I'm going to skip over that, just leave that in your hands. Look at how it was done in the code, see if you could match it up, and then we're just going to move on to some newer stuff, okay? Okay, so let's move on from here then. So uh, basically what you've learned so far are variables and types, operators, types and conversions and casting, methods and parameters, and conditionals. And so we're going to add to that today using loops. And uh, the first thing MIT wants to talk about is good programming style. And of course, you know, as usual, I'm going to tell you what I agree with and what I don't agree with, okay? So here we go. Uh, what do they say? What's good programming style? The goal of good style is to make your code more readable uh, by you and others and others by you. Now let me just make a point about this. And, and essentially this is very important that you comment your code and that you have good programming style. The reason is, is I gotta be honest, I do so much coding, I don't remember what I do the next day. Now I'm not sure if that's from getting older or if it's just I just have so much volume. I think it's a combination of both. So it's really essential that I leave a trail, you know, a note trail, something in the, in the code, comments, and it's organized well so I can go back and say, oh that's what I did. And many times you see why that's why people are building frameworks, because frameworks are always the same. And I don't know if we've talked about frameworks before. We are going to start talking about frameworks. It's called MVC, Architecture, Model, Viewer, and Controller. And the reason that's so important is because it's always the same. So it's easy to plug into a, a framework and know where you're at, where you have custom code. It's not quite, you know, it might not be quite sure where everything's going. It's the MVC, M for model, V for view, and C for controller. So C will have hold your control logic. N will be the view, like the interfaces that you're looking at, and in the model kind of the uh, interface with the data that's, that's underneath. And so when you separate your code like that, it makes it more portable and easier to work with. So, uh, so it's very important in a sense to have frameworks, to have methodologies, so when you go back and look at your code the next day, you know exactly what you're looking at. And let's say, hey, here's an example of some bad coding, and that's when you name your strings like A1, A2, A, a and B, you know, whatever. But they don't make any sense. So what the heck is B? What is the heck is A2? And all of us seem to fall in that trap because sometimes it takes less strength thinking to do that. What we actually want to do, you know, uh, is kind of name your names. Uh, in this sense, what he's doing is he's using camel capping. Camel capping is like a hump. He's got a small letter at the beginning and a big letter in the middle. You see that? He says first name. Yeah, last name. And he's just going to go temperature. So he's, when you look at those strings, you know what they are. But when you look at A1, A2, and B, you don't. So it says that's bad coding. That's good. Yes, I agree with that definitely. Uh, the next example is use indentation. So many times you'll see in code where you have this indentation that's also very good. I want you to do that. In Adobe Flash Builder, they now have an automatic indentation where you can just highlight your code, click, and it automatically indentates it for you. And so one of the problems uh, I run into sometimes is when I'm uh, trying to record code and it's so indented that I can't get it all on the screen. So I'll, I'll bring it in. And in my book, when I wrote Paper Vision, I actually did that same thing. I wish I hadn't, but there just wasn't room to get it all on the page. So you had to and violate all these rules, but you definitely want to do this indentation business and keep that going. Understand how that works, okay? And he's saying Control Shift F to auto format the file. Okay, I can't disagree with that. Let's go to the next slide. And he's saying this is bad coding and this is good coding. And this is where we start to disagree, okay? I would code like this and not code like that. <laughs> and you're going to find most coders are going to code like that, okay? In a sense, when it comes to mathematical functions, they're actually going to cram them together as opposed to making spaces like that because that actually is really more confusing when you have lots and lots of mathematical expressions. Okay, now, if you're just doing a few things and you want your teacher to be able to read it well, yeah, let's do that. But you're going to see that most coders will cram these mathematical expressions together tight because they typically have a lot of them and they recognize them and you should recognize them too. MIT says it's not, I say it is. Uh, I typically get rid of my spaces and run my equations as close as possible and if something doesn't quite make sense then I'll put some spaces in there. But this actually is more confusing for me when I look at that. I'm going, oh boy, uh, you know what I'm saying? So I like the other one better and so that's where we disagree but uh, just on that point right there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, classes typically start with a capital letter. So when you create a class it starts with a capital letter. So if I decided to create a capital class like bunnies, I would start with B-U-N-N-Y. Now methods, or no, for example, like you saw uh, variables, you can case them. You can start with lower, you can start with capital, but typically always 
you want to have your classes start with a capital. Scanner is an internal class, so they're going to start that with a capital letter. Now here's an example which uh, I take some issue with, yes and no, okay? Let me tell you why this gets you in trouble. Uh, I, I do this when my code gets confusing, then I'll put spaces in, okay? But what happens with this, some people actually pay by the line when you actually code for them. All right? And they get upset when they see spaces, <laughs> especially if they're paying, you know, 10 cents a line. They go, oh, my God, you're charging me for, you know, uh, a space. <laughs> you know, and I actually ran into this just recently, and it wasn't a client that was paying for it. But I told them, you know, this is 3,000 lines of code. And they looked at it, but you have all these spaces in here. Well, I put the spaces in there for readability. They had their uh, uh, other programmer take it, take all the spaces out, and they got so confused it took them an extra three days to actually finish the program. So I will, from time to time, put spaces as, if it's confusing, okay? But if it's not confusing, and in the case, if, if, the, uh, if the indentation is handling it for you, I won't put the spaces in. But uh, when I get to about 3,000 lines of code, I'm putting spaces in, I'm putting, you know, all types of comments in, I'm actually separating, uh, just as readable, all right? And what's going to happen is, is when you need to debug, that can be very helpful. Uh, you want to scroll down and see if you can find something. Here's no problem. Hey, this is great. But when you get to about three, 4,000 lines of code, then it, it can become difficult. And it's not untypical, as you see that, you saw it in PHP, to have a 3,000, 4,000 line class. All right, and uh, so there we have it. And so, yeah, I got some agreement with that. I wouldn't put spaces here, but for larger blocks of code, I would. Now, what you want to do, actually, is when you get to about three or 4,000 lines of code, is actually start breaking that up into smaller classes that are reusable and just start you know, working with the classes themselves. And that's what most people do. But sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes you have to have a large class, and it's easier that way, and that's what people do. What he's saying here is actually, this is a control logic error. Was actually uh, using this again, and you don't need to do that. Uh, so what he's saying is don't duplicate control logic. If you don't need it, don't use it. And so if you go to the next one, he can do the same amount of control logic by uh, just you know, taking out one of those uh, conditionals. Okay? So, and, and people do that sometimes. They just use more control logic they need. Still does the same thing, but you know it actually taxes the processor just a little bit more. So if you're running thousands and thousands of iterations and you put one or two extra steps in there, they'll actually slow you down a little bit. So one of the key things of uh, actually programming efficiently is just watching, uh, not adding an extra control steps, okay, and removing those whenever you can. That way, uh, Java will run much more efficiently, okay. And uh, good programming style. He's just gonna you know review this, use good names, use indentation. Add white spaces. I said when need it, and don't duplicate tests. Okay, and there we have it. And uh, now we're going to start with loops. Any questions about uh, good programming style? And I think that's a very appropriate lecture at this point in, uh, in the uh, class uh, to just say, hey, hey, he's probably gotten two or three assignments now, and they look terrible. And says, guys, I'm going to start marking off because I can't read any of this stuff. Okay.